Hey guys, today I'm back in Dream Car Builder, and I wanted to try using the glitchy engine design to make a VTOL. Now I just wanted to say my first 40 minutes of footage got corrupted, but I did manage to save it using a tool I downloaded off a Russian website. Now for some reason, it's only in 15 FPS instead of the 30 I recorded it in, so anything I sped up looks fine, but the tests in the first couple minutes are a little rough unfortunately. Now with that out of the way, let's get right into it. So I'm starting off in the sandbox here, and you can see the plane I made in my last episode, but I just cleared that since now I don't need it, and I wanted to start working on the engine. Now last time I had tried a bunch of different things, and what really ended up working out was to have a wheel connected to a single framing piece so that it was pretty weak, but could still for some reason impart some torque onto the rotating pieces, but this time there's a little bit of a different strategy to make it work that I've looked at, and I'm excited to try it out here. So just starting out, I made this pyramid shape that's able to rotate, and you can see here the frame rate is awful, but this should be the only clip that's that bad, and as I try to spin it up, it does does spin up, it's a little hard to see because the jets sort of just go crazy. Now to get the engine to be able to spin this up, what I need to do is put two wheels on the outside of this rotating pyramid, and I had tried this in my last episode, but what I really need to do is make sure to reverse the direction of one of the two wheels so that they're rotating in the same direction. Ordinarily they get rotating in opposite directions, but if you uncheck a box in the settings, it allows you to do this, and now you can see as they spin up the wheels, they spin in the same direction. Now all I need to do is turn down the gear ratio for the engine so that it makes the wheel spin really fast, and this immediately starts to spin this up. Now it's hitting the ground, so it's not really rotating very well, but I can fix that pretty easily just by lowering everything down a bit and giving another test here. And you can see it immediately starts to spin this up and it's going way faster than the engine was in my last episode. Definitely this is a much better design. Now I tried moving in the wheels as much as I possibly could, and I just wanted to see if this would increase the speed of the engine at all, but it seemed to have no effect. So next I tried increasing the size of the engine to see if this would make it go any faster, and once again it seemed to have no effect. Now I also tried increasing and decreasing the size of the wheels, I didn't show those clips though because the frame rate was pretty bad, but it seemed like the smallest wheels created the most amount of speed, so I'm going to roll with those. Now I tried also adding in four wheels instead of just two, I figured this probably wasn't going to increase the speed, but I was hoping it would make the motion a bit more continuous, and this seemed to maybe be true. It wasn't the most scientific test, so I'm not actually sure if that made that happen, but it also seemed to balance out the engine a bit better, and it seemed like in general it was rotating a bit better. So I tried making the tire height as big as I possibly could, and you can see here it's like all tire, no rim, and this seemed to have absolutely no effect on how fast it went. So I did the opposite of that and just made it all rim and very little tire, and this is just purely for aesthetics. So I think it looks a bit better. And I also decreased the ABS and increased the tire pressure as much as I possibly could. And I didn't think this was going to matter at all, but for some reason it did. It seemed like the tire pressure specifically made the motion much more continuous and less jittery. So I guess I'll just use that. And I also tried increasing the width of the tires as much as possible, but this seemed to have no effect. So I made them as small as I could just for aesthetics again. And now they're like bicycle tires and they still seem to work out. So I tried adding in some propeller blades here and it's just sort of for fun because I wanted to see how fast it actually get this thing going up. And my first test, it just kind of ran it straight into the ground because I didn't give it enough clearance. So I shrunk down the blades a little bit and also added on some wheels. And once I did this and gave it another test, it was a little bit of a rough start, but once it got going, it really started to pull the car forwards and I could tell it was producing a lot of lift. So now we're actually out of that bad clip with the terrible frame rate, and I'm starting to work on basically rotating the whole engine down and starting to get some real propellers in place. So here I just rotated the engine 90 degrees, and you can see it still works in the same way, but it's just in a different orientation. And I was building up the body of this a little bit because I wanted to start working on the wings. Now I wasn't going to add in actual wing panels yet, I was going to work on the plane part of this way in the future, and the reason for that is I was worried that wing panels would create a ton of drag and really just cause problems with this when I was trying to get it in the air, just make things unpredictable. So I decided just to skip that for now and start basically working on the vertical landing and takeoff part of this, and I'll worry about the transition later. So after reinforcing the wings, I copied over the top square from the engine, and what this is going to do is allow me to directly connect it to the engine and copy its rotation. So here I'm putting in those linkages, and this is just a 4 bar linkage, so as the center engine rotates, it also rotates the two pieces on the ends. Now the advantage of this is I could put the engine in the center of the plane, and then just have the rotation be carried out, and this just makes weight distribution a little bit easier, and also allows me to use one engine to power both of the propellers. Now it's not perfect, because having one engine power both the propellers means they're spinning in the same direction, so there's going to be a lot of weird torque issues that happen, but it should be good enough. Now here I have two propellers in place, and it's sort of working, but one of the propellers is actually pushing up while the other one's pushing down, and this is because the two propellers are actually mirrored across the center of the plane, but I actually need them to be identical to each other instead of being mirrored since they're rotating in the same direction. So to fix that, I have to manually go in and then just reverse the direction of the two blades. And once I do that, I tried spinning up the engine, I could tell it was a lot more resistive this time, and it didn't go anywhere. 
Now I wasn't entirely surprised by this because all of my framing pieces were 10 units of mass instead of one, so they were a lot heavier than they needed to be. So I turned that down and you can see here the blades are rotating a lot faster, but it's still not getting off the ground. So I tried increasing the size of the blades to see if that would have any effect and it seemed like it was basically the same thing, I just wasn't even getting off the ground at all. So I decreased the weight of the blades all the way down to 0.1 units, and at this point they were so weak they were just going crazy. So I replaced the engine with jets, and this was just temporary to see how much power it would really take to get this off the ground. And even with jets that are 40 power, it still couldn't do it, so I had to turn it up to 100 power, and finally here I was able to get it off the ground. It's imbalanced, the back is very heavy, but it was technically getting off the ground here, and I was really surprised by how much speed these propellers needed to really get this off the ground. So I saved what I had, and started working on just getting the propellers refined as much as possible to get it off the ground, and then once I got it working, I would just put my fixes on what I had. So here I have that propeller in the center, and you can see it's just sort of rotating, but it's still not getting off the ground. So I tried adding in a second engine, and while the propeller was going faster, it definitely wasn't fast enough to get this off the ground. So what I realized I needed to do was assign my own lift coefficient. Now what this allows me to do is turn up the lift from 200 to 1000, so this creates a lot more lift, but it's a little weird. You'll see here, it just makes things look a little odd, but it's technically vanilla, so I'm okay with it. Now the wheels here you can see are somewhat rotating in this test. Now it's not getting off the ground, but I was kind of thinking this thing was very close to. So I turned down the drag coefficient of all the blades to 100 instead of 200, so that they have a lot easier time getting through the air. And once I did that, it managed to get off the ground. Now once I had that fix, I loaded back in my double blade design, and assigned all the propeller panels so that the lift coefficient was 1000, and the drag coefficient was 100. And once I did that, I gave it another test here, and it was getting off the ground, but it was still very back heavy. So instead of moving the engine further forwards to fix that problem, I just added more mass to the front of this. And once I did that, you can see it's easily getting off the ground, and it's actually able to sustain a pretty good hover. So I copied off the propellers, and I wanted to start working on the swash plate. Now, planes don't usually have these, but I need it for the VTOL, because when it's in its hover mode, the only way I can really control it is by adjusting the pitch of the blades at any given time, and for that, I would need a swash plate. So I'm doing something similar to my helicopter video, where for the pitch control what I have is a series of 8 rods that can push up and down, and the way that they're set up, they always push straight up and down, it just makes the geometry very easy. But to get it to work, I need to make it a lot bigger than I was hoping for, and to fix that problem, what I basically did is just scaled the entire thing down, I think by a factor of a half, and it just makes the whole thing look a lot neater, and it also gives me a lot of other space to work on the other controls. So here you can see I'm able to push these up and down, and it works out. So I'm putting back on the propellers, since now I wanted to try out that pitch control that I added in, and the first thing I'm doing is kind of smushing them together so that they're much closer together, and also reinforcing them so that the blades are able to freely swing side to side, you can see here, but otherwise they're fixed. So I can adjust the pitch of the blade however I like, but otherwise the blade is totally fixed in place. And once I got that, I flattened out the blades, and then connected them using two rods to the bottom of the wing. And this means when I push up and down the center of the blades, it's going to adjust the pitch of the blade, and you can see here it creates a little bit of lift. And with that out of the way, there's only two more controls to add in. Now, these are going to be the forwards and backwards and left and right controls. Well, I guess that's four controls. Uh, pretend I didn't say that. So what I'm going for is just two rods, and they're going to push back and forth on a single framing piece. And I can use this point being pushed forwards and backwards to adjust the pitch of the blades at different points in the rotation. This design, though, wasn't great. And you can see here, it's very weak, and if I hit the wrong buttons, it ends up flipping upside down. So I decided to delete it and go for something I have never used in a video before, and that's a slider. Now I normally don't get too much use out of these because I don't really use enough mechanisms to make it work, but the sliders are great here because you can see just with a single slider and a single rod, I can push it forwards and backwards, and I can adjust the pitch of the blade. So connecting up the edge of the blades to this slider, and now if I give it a quick test, it's kind of hard to see anything happening in this view, but if I turn up its max compression and stretch, you can see here it's a much more noticeable effect, and in the air I'm able to quite easily make myself move forwards and backwards. There I was going backwards, and just by hitting forwards I was able to, well, go forwards. So there's only one more left after that, and this is the forwards and backwards control. So here I kind of started out using sliders to make this work, but it was very weak, and I realized my main problem is that I need three sets of sliders on top, well I guess at least two. And what this is going to do is keep it stable, so I'm able to make a platform that can slide forwards and backwards with the pitch control, and on that platform I can add on the left and right control, so that the two controls in the bottom can work together to move a single point around that the pitch of the blades ends up being biased by. So I just have to play with the sliders for a little bit, and once I got it working so that you can see here as I push it back and forth, it's able to move the platform back and forth. I rotated one of the sliders so it's on a different brace, and I'm able to push it back and forth using a rod, 
and once I combine the two rods together, I'm able to move this slider wherever I want. Well, anywhere I want that the rods can move them. And then finally what I did is just connected up that slider, it's able to move wherever it wants, to the pitch of the blades. And once I did that, I tried giving it another test here, and it can definitely fly, but there's a few problems that I actually kind of haunt me for a while. When I try to move left and right, it doesn't entirely work. It does move left and right, but it also makes it tilt back. You can see here I tried moving and it made it tilt back. And I think this is because the two blades are rotating in the same direction. And because the engine's creating a lot of torque on the body, it's kind of hard for this thing to move side to side without having issues. Now the next thing to do is start working on the plane part of the VTOL, and really for that I wanted to add in the tail, and just make sure it was going to be stable while I was flying. So I just built up a basic frame for that, and then added in some paneling pieces, and then made sure to turn up their lift coefficients that they're able to produce a little bit of lifts and therefore control the plane a bit. And I also added in a horizontal stabilizer like this. All things considered is pretty easy to do, I just had to add in a few framing pieces, and then turn up the lift coefficient of everything, and then make sure to brace it all together. And giving you a quick test here, the back's a little bit floppy, but otherwise everything seems to be fine. So I can fix that problem by just using a couple framing pieces, and I can just start working on the rest of this. And now what I'm doing is copying over the swash plate, moving it over to the side, and deleting a lot of it. And the reason for this is what I want to do is have a system to be able to tilt these propellers forwards instead of up, so I'm able to have two propellers propelling it forwards in plane mode. Now to get this to work, I have to remove all of the bracing pieces from the center part of the engine so that's only connected using a single point to the rest of the plane. And to prevent it from tilting, I'm going to add in some rods. And these rods can be able to pull it forwards and backwards, but I really only need to tilt it forwards. And this allows it to convert into plane mode. So once I had those rods basically how I'd like them, I had to copy them over to the two propellers on the edge of the wings, and this just allows all of the pieces to, in unison, be able to tilt to the side and turn into plane mode. Now that I had that working, I put the four bar linkages back in place, and really, for some reason, I had some inspiration to just start working on the modeling for this, and I started working on the cockpit. Now, in VTOLs, it seems like the design is more like a helicopter than a plane, but it seems like it's kind of a hybrid between the two, so I kind of tried to capture that, and I don't know if I succeeded, but it kind of resembles something. So after I finished modeling that here, I gave it a quick test to make sure it all hold together, and it seemed to be fine, so I guess it was all good. And I started working on the body of the plane, and for this I wanted to go for something that's pretty strong and pretty light. So I went for just a single wooden rod, and then made sure to reinforce it a few times using some cross braces. And once I had that, I started working on the wings, and for this is actually pretty easy since I pretty much had everything in place already since I had to for the propellers. And once I put in those panels and then turned up the lift coefficients, I also put in another set of panels like this, and these are going to be for the pitch control. Now I eventually moved these to the back of the plane, which you'll see later in the video, because it gives me a bit more authority, but for now it's just easy to put these in since it literally required like no extra points. And I tried throwing it off the building to see how well it would fly. Now it takes off fine enough, but it seems to have a bit of trouble, and while it is coasting fine, it is very uncontrollable and it seems like it's very easy to just kind of shake and do that. So to fix that, what I wanted to do is add in some roll control, and I was hoping this is going to allow me to steer the plane and hopefully just gain a bit of control. So for that, I just put in a couple paneling pieces on the edge of the wing, and made sure to use a pyramid shape to connect it all together. And then finally, I put in another diamond shape on the wing itself to give me a base to put on the rod. And then once I put on the rod, you can see here I'm able to tilt it up, and that's going to allow me to roll the plane. Now in this test here, it was definitely far better than last time, but it still wasn't perfect, and you can see I'm still tilting to the one side, and therefore I'm moving to that side when I really don't want to. And I think it has to do with the torque produced by the engine on the plane. And this just makes it roll and it's very hard to counter that. So I know I said I didn't want to do this and I did not want to do this, but what I thought I might have to do was to add in an opposite rotator. So I'll be able to have the propellers rotate in opposite directions to produce thrust. And more importantly, the torques produced by each of the propellers in the body of the plane will cancel out and I shouldn't have any problems controlling it in plane mode. So to build a second rotator, I just shared the same shaft I did for the first one. But once I got it here, it seemed to be working, but I realized only the bottom one was rotating. Now I originally thought because the bottom rotator wasn't connected to any other 4-bar linkages, most likely it was being under no load, so it was just able to rotate faster than the other one. So I made sure that each one of the rotators was connected to one propeller, but even so, you can see here the bottom one rotates, but the top one doesn't. And I was very confused at this point, and I figured what was probably happening was maybe because they were sharing the same shaft, the torques were somehow causing problems with each other, and what I need to do is have these rotating on separate shafts. So that's exactly what I did. I added in a second rotator, and then have the wheels on both the rotators to make sure they're getting equal power. But even so, it still wasn't working. The front one was rotating, but the bottom one wasn't. And I really couldn't explain why this was happening, and I could only assume at this point it had to do something with only having one engine, and I was not going to be adding in another engine since it was just is going to be way too much weight. So unfortunately I had to revert back to just having the single rotator and I needed to find a way to counteract this. And one of the ways I did this was by adjusting my roll control so that it automatically has a 
bit of roll, it's trying to rotate the plane counterclockwise, and this counters the clockwise rotation the engine is trying to put on the plane. Not perfectly, but it's definitely a lot better, and I could kind of make the plane go where I want now. So I figured with a bit more tuning, that was definitely going to be good enough. And uh, finally, since I was getting very close to the end here, I decided to panel up the plane to uh, make it a little bit prettier. And once I got all those panels in place, I set the color to be a deep blue since I don't think I made any other planes like that. And finally, I added in the windshield, I made it clear, and then changed the propellers so that they're gray. And now I'm doing what I said I was going to do before. I'm adding in the pitch control to the back of the plane. Now this just gives me a lot more authority when I'm on the back of the plane than when I'm on the wings. And finally, what I would consider to be the last major change is changing out the static framing pieces that adjust the pitch control for rods. Now the rods I can automatically have pull back when I turn this thing into plane mode. And what that enables me to do is always be producing thrust forwards when I'm in plane mode. This just saves me from having to hit another button on my keyboard, which basically just saves me a bit of time and aggravation. It also looks kind of cool when I try it out here. So basically I'm just giving it a quick test now, and I'm trying to use it in helicopter mode. It's very hard to keep this thing stable, but it is definitely possible. And here you can see I got a few good seconds of hover before I ended up deciding just to land. Now when this thing is moving forwards, it's so much more stable because the tail pieces can end up kind of coming into effect. And it just makes it so much easier for this thing to not roll over or pitch back really far or do anything crazy like that. Now giving it a quick plane mode test here, you can see I have to take off in helicopter mode. And once I get up high enough, I turn it into plane mode. The propeller blades tilt forwards and I start moving forwards. Now I'm going very slow, it's 25 miles an hour. And in fact, this plane is slower than the helicopter mode. I'm not entirely sure why that's the case, but for some reason when I tilt those blades forwards it just has a lot of trouble. Now even though it's slow, this thing is still very controllable and I had absolutely no problem tilting this thing, rolling this thing, doing whatever I needed to, and I could basically get it wherever I needed to go. And here I'm going in for the landing, so I turned it back into helicopter mode, and once I did that, I was trying to go for as vertical as a landing as I possibly could get, and I didn't get a perfectly vertical landing, but it was definitely a lot more vertical than you could get in a normal plane. In fact here I almost got a perfect hover before it ended up just falling over to the side a bit. So guys, thanks for watching. This video was a lot of fun to make, I'm glad I got to try out the better engine design. I wish it was a little more powerful though, it was a little underpowered for the VTOL, and unfortunately I did have to increase the lift coefficient of the propellers, which works, it's just not my favorite thing to do. So as always, if you got any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and otherwise, until next time.